The plot continues with the characters fighting an evil organization that wants to spread darkness in the world. Which means people in this setting are not evil because they want to, it's because they're being manipulated into being evil by some power of darkness. What a lovely way to destroy the socio-political themes. It's not selfish rulers being mean to everyone anymore, it's a dark power that mind controls them. This dark organization sends bad guys to kill the main characters so they can spread darkness into the world. And they do that by literally jumping out of nowhere in the story. They kick the crap out of the good guys until more powerful good guys also jump out of nowhere to save them. Because who gives a shit about proper build-ups? It's not an adventure about finding a good king anymore. It's about people jumping out of nowhere with no build-up so they can stop darkness from spreading into the world. After that, the manga becomes an aimless action adventure. Besides their power levels going up, they don't do anything towards stopping that evil organization. In fact, it's like they forgot about that and the main plot is not moving forward. At the same time, it's not filler, since as far as world building goes, they explore different civilizations and they gain new abilities and allies from every mission. First they fight pirates, then one of them goes to a magic academy, another one becomes a gladiator. Despite all that, the main objective has been completely forgotten, the arcs are loosely connected, and you will often wonder where are we going and what's the point in any of this. Midway through the manga, the various powerful nations go to war with each other and things seem to get epic since you get long discussions about politics and how the people must not suffer by the powerful. There are elaborate segments where we see huge armies mobilizing and using all sorts of tactics in battles. It looks epic and seems to be getting to something good. And then the protagonist appears and uses his hacks magic for scaring the army into retreating without killing a single person. A build-up to a war that keeps escalating for 20 chapters ends with a shonen hero flexing how broken his superpowers are. The mangaka doesn't know how to handle the themes she wants to explore. On one hand, she wants to be realistic with elaborate societies and army tactics, and on the other hand, she resolves everything in a hurry as if it's a fairy tale with a hacks shonen protagonist who is a pacifist and can end the huge wars without having to kill anyone. Then the power scaling goes whack as the next guy who gets possessed by darkness is not just stronger than the previous ones they fought so far. He's so strong he summons a giant that can destroy the whole world and it takes the combined effort of a dozen overpowered warriors to stop it. The fight is amazing if you see it as an isolated event, but the build up to it is just not there. Half of the overpowered dudes in the fight were hardly shown so far. We don't know them or have any idea how the hell they appeared in battle all of a sudden. It's not like the mangaka rushes to get to the next major event without spending any time on building up the conflict. She spends dozens of chapters in fleshing out societies, but not the major fighters who eventually end every conflict. After that, the mangaka completely forgets what manga she's supposed to be making and spends hundreds of pages in narrating the history of a different world. It's basically a summary of the most important events of the past, with constant time skips and a lot of narration. It's very epic in scope, but that doesn't change the fact that it's not the same story! There's not even a plot for dozens of chapters, because all we get is a flashback that is longer than most arcs in the actual story. The mangaka clearly doesn't give a shit about plot anymore, she just narrates any weird ideas she had about a different setting, not even the one the story takes place in. A competent mangaka would have shown all that gradually as the main plot unfolds, which if you remember was about dungeons, genies and a search for a good king. All that got wasted on a creepy protagonist who molests women, long battles with characters we don't care about because no time was spent on them, an evil organization that is hardly seen doing anything, and all that is wrong in the world being some magical darkness that makes you do bad things. All you are left with is a cool concept with a terribly dull execution. 
Anyways, after that there is a huge time skip where one of the major characters who should be dead magically survives, because there is no such thing as permanent death in modern shonen. The manga becomes a tourist guide since the only thing he does is going from one place to another and seeing how the world changed out of screen. It feels like a civilization building story, but it's not, since we are not shown the building part. We don't get to see the change, we are only shown the result. At least the evil organization finally makes an appearance, only to get completely obliterated in a few pages by the broken protagonist. How satisfactory! Now let's go back to the tourist guide where nothing happens. Also, I know it's expected to have that in every shonen, but it's still something that ruins the tension every single time. The protagonist is both royalty and the chosen one. He is the son of the most awesome king of all times and is also a wizard with the most hux powers, meaning every opponent he faced so far was a typical mortal who never stood a chance against him and who was also beneath him both in rank and in inborn potential, because there is no such thing as a real underdog in modern shonen. Anyways, the last arc is about the final villain wanting to destroy reality so he can become a god. Although there is action again, it doesn't matter, since like always it comes down to a debate about freedom versus control. The ontological side of this debate is very interesting as a concept, since destiny in this setting is defined by the gods, who are distant and frankly we never see them, they are too abstract to make sense and exist on a higher plane of existence. In this unusual take, the people of the world have been brainwashed and want to return to nothingness, because the final villain reprogrammed them to desire that. Meaning nobody besides the Magi and their super special allies have actual free will, the rest are just behaving however they have been programmed to behave. You know, like programs in a video game. So yeah, it's like Attack on Titan, where they don't have free will and do whatever the gods want them to do. Anyways, every overpowered character in the show Fire is his Kamehameha the final bad guy and the world is saved, even if it looks like a complete mess because of the partial reality warping fuss. A new age of adventure and exploration begins where everything has to be discovered and built from scratch, meaning all those hundreds of pages that were spent on talking about societies are now completely useless and you wasted your time remembering what they were about. Also, everyone is strangely happy about it, although there is no infrastructure anymore, so anyone can be a criminal who can do whatever crap he likes in this completely lawless world. The end. What happened to the good king they were supposed to find? What a pile of bull, just interesting concepts without any sense of build-up or plot continuity. I can't give it more than a 3 out of 10.